If you've ever been in that situation where you're like, oh, I just really wanna get super close up to this subject, right? Like you want that super delicious close up shot, but for some reason, like your camera, it's not focusing. You can't get any closer. You're like, what? what's wrong with this thing? What's wrong with my camera? It's probably not something wrong with your camera. We gotta make sure you have the right gear. So let's start talking about macro photography. <laughs> What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. And the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And today we are kicking off a month long of macro photography as a part of the Bite Shop Book Club. Feel free to use the hashtag over on Instagram so I can check out what you're photographing. Uh, we are talking about macro photography because this is the book club selection for this month. If you're on my email list, you got all the notifications and the details of this book ahead of time. Uh, it has recently been back ordered because so many of you have ordered it. So <laughs> thanks for ordering it. Hope you're, those of you who've gotten it are enjoying it. Um, but it's the complete guide to macro and close up photography. So we are going to spend the next couple of weeks here digging into topics in this book. And so when we talk about close up and macro photography, that's kind of what it is. Macro is we are getting physically very close up to our subject. But if you've ever tried to do that with a standard lens, like for example, like the kit lens that comes with your DSLR or mirrorless camera, you're like, I can't get any closer. Like I want to get right up in that cupcake or I want to like photograph some salt or something really small, but your camera, it has a minimum focusing distance. And so that's why then we start talking about the world of macro lenses. Now you might have researched macro lenses and you go, Joni, that's not in my budget. I don't have like $400 just lying around to go buy a macro lens. What do I do? Well, there is a really cost effective solution that actually is covered here in the gear section within this book. On page 34, the author talks about teleconverters and extension tubes. And this is actually the first time I've ever played with extension tubes. I had a friend of mine a number of months ago say, you know, you should pick some of them up. They're really fun to play with, experiment with. And while well, obviously now having read it here in this book, I was like, I gotta pick some of these little guys up and they are really fun to play with. Extension tubes are hollow devices without any optical elements that are installed between the camera and the lens. Their purpose is to increase the extension of the lens to move the front lens further away from the image sensor. And you're like, okay, big whoop. What, is, what does that mean, Joni? Why is that important? Well, let me just walk you through it just to show you in practical terms what all this means. So this is a set of extension tubes, super inexpensive. This is by Velo. I got this on b and I'll link it down below so you can check it out. I wanna say it was like $65, $70. So, I mean, it's certainly money to spend, but in comparison to buying a macro lens, definitely uh, a bit more affordable affordable and they come apart just twist them apart like you would any sort of lenses and you can see they come in different sizes so for example this is a 20 millimeter we have right here this is the what is this 12 millimeter and 36 millimeter and so what these are doing you can see inside there's no glass there's no anything really that special about these um, but what we can do is we take our camera and oh let's how many cameras do I have sitting around here <laughs> So today I'm shooting with the Canon 70D and then a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, which we lovingly refer to as the Nifty 50, the Plastic Fantastic. It's an inexpensive lens, about $125. When people ask me, you know, what lens should I invest in to get started in food photography, this is a great go-to. But the limitation of this lens, if you wanna get super close up to your subject, is that your minimum focusing distance is gonna restrict the ability to get super close in. So like today, we're shooting these chiltepin, which are these special peppers that uh, come from Mexico. I've got a friend here in Phoenix who's got a connection that gets them from Mexico and they are fantastic, super duper spicy. So you use them in limited quantities, but they're absolutely beautiful. They kind of remind me of red peppercorns. And so I wanted to photograph these super close up, but if I get the 50 millimeter F1.8, I'm going to be limited. According to the specs on this lens, 40 centimeters is about as close as we can physically get uh, while still being able to get focus on that subject. And so if we wanna use this same lens, be, be able to get closer and do some macro photography, well, we can just turn this into a macro lens with the extension tube. So all you have to do, we take our lens off right and then we can take one of these various extension tubes so 
Gonna go ahead and take the 12, just snap that right on to the body of the camera, and then I can add my lens on. Now, obviously, it's very important if you're gonna buy extension tubes that you're familiar with the mount of the type of lenses you're using, right? So I'm using EF mount lenses for Canon cameras. So I made sure to get the corresponding extension tubes that go along with that. And so now, because the lens is further from that sensor, giving us some additional distance, that's causing this magnification effect, which is then allowing us to reduce that minimum focusing distance, allowing us to get a whole lot closer to the subject. And you can see then too, as I go through the different extension tubes, going through the 12, and then the 20, and then the 36, that we're getting even closer. Talk about some magnification. I mean, obviously this lens would not be able to do that on its own. So for those of you who wanted to do macro photography, but you're like, I don't have the money for a macro lens, this is an outstanding solution. Now, one thing to note, if you're looking at extension tubes, there are sets that are less expensive than this, but the reason that I spent a little bit more money, like maybe $10 more, $15 more, uh, is in order to have the electronic contacts that are on these lenses that allow the ability for the camera to still communicate with the lens as far as the features of autofocus, and aperture adjustment so that you know there are certain sets that don't come with those electronic contacts and so it's going to make things just a little bit trickier in terms of dialing in your aperture uh, or dialing in autofocus if you're using those features so just something to pay attention to now one question that will come up is will using an extension tube impact the quality of my images is it going to degrade that quality at all and technically no I mean there's no glass here there's nothing to interfere with the communication of your sensor to the glass that's in the lens that you have. However, every lens is going to behave differently with the use of extension tubes. So it's just something you've got to experiment with and play with and see how it impacts that particular lens. So now if you're sitting there and you're like, okay, Joni, I just bought a macro lens. Like I got one for Christmas or I've spent all this money on a macro lens. Why did I do that? I could have just gotten an extension tube. Absolutely, extension tubes are awesome, don't get me wrong. But one of the limitations of an extension tube is that you don't have the ability to focus to infinity. And so what does that mean? Well, it's the idea of we can't pull further back, that there is a very specific range that we can shoot from when utilizing a lens with an extension tube. That It does allow us to get really, really close up, but then if we start to pull back and try to shoot from further away, there will be a certain point at which it will say, mm, sorry, you can't go any further back and it won't be able to focus, that there is a very set range of the distance that you can shoot from. Whereas with like my favorite 100 millimeter f2.8 macro lens that I can shoot from further away, which I do quite frequently. I really love the way that looks. Now granted, when I shoot a macro lens from further away, I'm not really utilizing that minimum focusing distance ability, but it is nice to be able to have that variability that you can shoot close up, you can shoot further away, and that a macro lens is going to allow you to do that. Whereas if you're shooting shooting with an extension tube, you're gonna be locked into a very specific distance from the subject, which might get a little frustrating. And so all that to say, in order to do macro photography, you do need the proper tools that allow you to minimize that minimum focusing distance. So you can get super close up to your subject and make little tiny things like chiltepine peppers look monumentally huge. And if you've not done this before, I think you're gonna have a whole lot of fun with it. But I will be back again next week. We're gonna be diving further into this book, talking more about macro photography and some special techniques. So be sure to come back for that. And if you wanna stay up to date because we are going to be running a little photography contest in line with this month's Bite Shop book club. So feel free to jump on my email list. It's down below. I promise I won't spam you. I'm not a spammy kind of person. I try not to har harass people too much, but I want to keep you in the loop. And so with that, I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you stay out of trouble. And I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.